What are you hearing? I'm, cer I'm certain that you're hearing from a lot of other business owners, business leaders in your position, both with the state and also with your company. Bill, so, I'm a small business owner. Most small business owners are you know, busy figuring out how they're going to make it meet in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, we are coming out of it, but still, it's been a tough year for many of us. And so that's what they're focused in on. Uh, as Secretary of State, I'm making sure that we have good laws. And I looked at SB 202. It has a lot of good provisions. One of those is as that lead in was, we now are going to go to driver's licenses, identification. It's very objective. It's an objective measure instead of signature match, which was very subjective. Uh, so you ask people, what is your driver's license number? And that's how you get your absentee ballot. And I think that's a good way of going moving forward. And, and many other states have similar uh, requirements for either in-person voting or for uh, uh, getting a, an absentee ballot using some kind of government ID. Of course, the counter argument there is that many, many, many more people in um, uh, minority communities, in poor communities, do not have driver's licenses, do not know how to or do not have the transportation to get to a place where they can easily secure uh, some sort of state-issued ID. Uh, but, but, but you said you wanted to clear up some misunderstandings about this law. And so my question well, to you will be no. this. What are those misunderstandings, number one, and how, if at all, do you think this law is out of the mainstream of other states' voting laws? Right now, uh, we have photo ID for in-person voting. Now we will have photo ID using driver's licenses for absentee ballots. That shores up confidence in the system. We have now made it mandatory that every county in, in the entire state will have minimum of 17 days of early voting up from 16 and then two days optional of Sunday voting, which is now 19 days. And so that's a good thing. We've also made it a law that counties need to make sure that their lines are no longer than one hour. And so that's very important. And we've also now shortened the runoff period. Instead of being two months long, it'll be down to one month for all of our overseas military ballots. And that's a very good thing also. Secretary, in all fairness, make sure that your line isn't an hour or longer. That is subjective. I think that might be a counter argument to what you were saying before about the idea, IDs being objective. How do you make sure? What are the penalties? I think that's one of the things a lot of people are asking questions about. But back to your role as the Secretary of State. You also handle applications to start corporations and LLCs. So you have a lot of that data. Are you worried that this new law may lead to some companies and businesses leaving Georgia or deciding not to come there? Uh, in recent years, we've seen the culture of a community a business is in is more and more important. You look at Austin, Texas or Boston, Massachusetts. Are you worried that people will start looking at Georgia as a town that they don't want to start a business in or don't want to move a corporate headquarters to? New corporations filing are up in spite of a pandemic here in Georgia. So they're still strong. And we've seen no let up in the past week uh, due to this controversy. Well, I mean, I don't think you'd see that data in a week. Are you worried long term? Well, I'm always going to be concerned about making sure we have a healthy business climate in Georgia. And I think we still do. Uh, this is an issue that got spun out of control. Uh, but if you really look at the bill, what it does and read the bill, it's a very, uh, in, I don't want to say not, the, it hasn't really changed much. It's now switched from signature match to photo ID for absentee ballot. That is very objective. We've increased early voting. We have now made sure that we can reduce our runoff period from two months down to one month. We also make sure that lines are short. Uh, we had an average of two minute wait time in the fall. And now we've put that into state law to make sure that counties continue that great progress that we've had. So let me let me come back to my earlier question. I think I know your answer, but I'd just like to get it specifically. Do you view that this view this new law as out of the mainstream or or not uh, in terms of, of what it requires voters to do to be able to vote? It's in the mainstream. Uh, there's 50 states and 50 states all have different sections. But you look at our driver's license ID. That's what they're using in Minnesota. In fact, this law was patterned after the Minnesota law, which is a Democrat state. This is used in red states and blue states. So, it is a nonpartisan bipartisan measure. So that's one example. Quickly, a couple of, of final questions, if I might. If I don't have a, a, a driver's license, what kind what other kinds of photo ID might be acceptable? We have other uh, 14 other appro approved ways of identifying yourself, and we also issue you an identification, you know, from the state by free, just like we do for in-person voting. So it's very similar, and so we've not had an issue for over 12 years now with in-person so voting, photo ID.
Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.